Well, good morning. I want you to please just uh, join with me. We're going to go to uh, Matthew, the eighth chapter, verse eight, specifically. And I want to thank you for joining me today. I believe God is doing some great and mighty things. And we have to enter into that. We have to have fun with it. And, um, and today we're going to talk about his word. Uh, it's important to know his word. Now, I, I mentioned the last time that, um, yeah, that, that uh, we are going to be coming into a revival of the word of God. We're going to come into a, a place where the word of God is preeminent again. And um, I mean, there's so many things about the word of God, uh, the simplicity with which to um, read it, understand it. And, um, and I want to I wanna delve into some of that today. All right. So, um, I want to go to Matthew, the eighth chapter. And again, uh, I'm going to be SSM this year, and it's exciting. Um, I kind of have a desire of which countries I want to go to for my missions trips. And if you want to invest in my mission trip this year, you can contact me at Tom and Sarah at uh, Outlook.com. That's my name, at Outlook.com. And you can, uh, and you can, just ask me and we'll send you the links. Uh, I do have two books for sale. Let me grab them here real quick. Um, I do have two books for sale. One of them is called SOS, A 50-Day Journey into the Heart of God. Okay. And, uh, and this is a devotional, the first devotional I ever wrote. And, um, and what it deals with is just a 50-day devotional on the Song of Songs. And it's interactive. It's not like I'm just going to teach you. It's um, that you are going to uh, receive something from the Lord. And, uh, and, and, and I believe that you're going to encounter the heart of God in this book. Uh, it has the little lines in it so that you can write your own stuff uh, on your meditations. I believe personally um, that a part of soul health comes. And now what I do is I meditate in the word three times a day for about five minutes or so. And, uh, and so I'm excited about that. And, and what I, what I do is I, you know, I'm just laying before the Lord and I'll um, get a verse or something will come into mind and I'll just meditate on it uh, for about five or 10 minutes, three times a day. Um, I take one day when I don't do anything that I normally do uh, that helps in my, in the rest of my soul. Uh, Matthew 11, uh, 28, 29, uh, that come heavy laden, burdened, and I will give you rest. I will uh, restore your soul. I will uh, give rest to your soul, Jesus said. Uh, that's all part of this book, From Breakdown to Breakthrough, My Journey to Soul Health. It's really thin. It's very practical, and it has, uh, it has resources uh, for you uh, to do it. Now, Back in um, uh, the early 2000s, I, I uh, either had a vision, it was an open vision, or uh, I actually went to heaven. And I don't know if I did or not. It's not a big deal whether or not I did. But um, uh, what happened was I had some things, and I wanted to share that in that book because it's part of my testimony. It's part of... Um, you know, my heart's desire for intimacy with the Lord. Um, many of us uh, along the road have this deal where we um, we're going through things. And, um, you know, and, and I and part of the vision that I had, you know, getting into the chamber of the Lord, going into this big meadow outside of the palace and uh, and up against this tree was a scepter. Now, the scepter was six feet tall, and it was about four feet wide at the top, and then came down into a point. And, um, and the top of it was a sphere. And if you twisted the sphere, uh, you can get, uh, like it opens up. And then on the inside are little trinkets or figurines from all the battles that I had won. All right. So I opened this thing up, and I, and, and, and I dropped everything. I didn't drop it. I poured out 
those things off of the, onto the ground. And, uh, and I said, Lord, what are these? And he said, those are um, figurines or trinkets or souvenirs of battles that you had won. For, and, I, and I looked at them, and some of those battles I know in my mind that I had lost those battles. I had um, um, gotten beaten. Um, and, I, and, and I said, Lord, you know, I lost that battle and I lost that battle. And the Lord looked at me and he said, no, that you didn't lose those battles. That's when you stopped and I picked them up for you and I won those battles. Remember, the Bible says that, um, yeah, the Bible does say it's the battle's not yours, but the Lord's. And then so he ended up winning those battles for me. And I, and I believe that the battles that we face, God uh, deals with them as well. All right. Are you in Matthew chapter 8? Uh, so let's go. And um, this is right after he heals the leper. Okay. Uh, verse 5. And when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home fearfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just, and this is important, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now, when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said, "Those who are uh, to those who are following, truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. And um, so I want to stop there. Uh, go with me to Psalm uh, 107. And, um, and we're just going to read a few verses today. And, and I believe that the Bible is so important. Um, Psalm 107, I should have put a bookmark in there. I didn't. Psalm 107, and we're going to go to verse 20. Verse 20 says, I uh, actually go to 19. Then I cried out to the Lord in their trouble. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent out his word, and he healed them and delivered them. From their destructions. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness, for his wonders uh, to the sons of men. He sent out his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So I don't know this. Um, I just kind of got this sense that the centurion was uh, sympathetic um, to the gospel, that he was sympathetic to Jesus. He had heard some of the teachings of Jesus, uh, or he had heard these people talking about him, all right? And it's possible, and I'm not saying it is, but it is possible that he knew this verse. And the centurion says, I don't need you to come to my house, but just speak the word, all right? There's a song from back in the uh, Toronto days, said healing word, he's he speaks his healing word, healing word. He sets me free and, um, and, 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 and heals me. And, and so understand that God sends out his word and he heals them. So he said, I, all, all you need to do, Jesus, is just send out your word and you will heal them. And, uh, and, and I remember um, this thing that, that when, when you come into God's word, that's why one of the reasons why it is so important to uh, hear God's word, to listen to God's word, to, um, wow, yeah, to hear God's word, to listen to God's word, to get God's word into your heart, because it is his word that heals. Remember, the devil came to Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit sent Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And, uh, and Jesus is out there, and the devil says, you know, if you are the Son of God. Well, that's the first thing that he said when the last thing that God said at the time of his baptism was, um, the last thing that he said, that God said was, uh, this is my beloved Son. 
you remember when they're on the Mount of Transfiguration that um, that Jesus or the disciples heard God say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased to hear him. Now, uh, and, and we'll get into that a little bit, but what happens is that Jesus speaks or God speaks, this is my son. The devil's first temptation is you are not a son. All right. And the devil tries to get you to, um, to buy into his lie that you really aren't a son. But the Bible says in, in John 1, 12, as many as received him, he gave the right to become the sons or children of God. So you are already in God's family and the devil can't. Well, if you love God, you're going to do. All right. Well, you know, there's always an obligation with the devil. Religion will tell you, you have to do this. You have to do that. When you are a true believer of Jesus, your, your heart is not, you have to do this. Rather, I want to do this. I'd love to do this because you're doing it out of a love relationship with the Lord. Now, um, you remember in John chapter 6 where Jesus says, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part of me. Great. Uh, a lot of, most of his disciples left him at that time. He had these huge crowds uh, and many, many, many left. He's left with the 12. And he says, are you going to leave also? And then Peter says something. He says, uh, where would we go? Because you have the word of eternal life. Okay. He speaks the word and he healed them. He sent out his word and he healed them. All you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. All right. So you have to recognize the power of God's word. In Luke chapter 1, he says, every spoken word of God carries with it the power to accomplish it. Um, he says that uh, uh, his word will not return uh, void or it will not return without accomplishing what it was set out to do. It is his word. All right. Um, he had that God had to shut up uh, Zachariah because Zachariah was walking in unbelief. And so God had to shut him up because if he had kept taught, if he had kept speaking, he may have said something to destroy the, 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 um, the, um, the outcome. Unbelief. When you speak a word out of unbelief, uh, it, it destroys it because death and life are in the power of the tongue and you're going to eat its fruit. Okay. So you have this going and you have to see that there is a, um, yeah, you have to see that there is a power and an anointing in the word. So if you're speaking God's word, that's why I love Bobby Connor so much. Bobby Connor, when he prophesies over you, he has Bible verses as well. All right. And, 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 and the, uh, it just makes sense. Because God speaks through his word. He also gives, you know, prophecy is foretelling and it's also forth telling. But what, what you are doing is when you prophesy, you are creating, um, you, you are creating something for that person going forward. Okay. I, I remember uh, back in, I want to say 77 or 78, something like that. Anyway, 76. Uh, I was at a church and on a Saturday after a softball game and I went in and I just heard the prayer and this woman prophesies over me and she says that you are going to be leading worship from the piano and uh, and and there's hundreds of people that are going to be listening to you. And, uh, and so I was like, I was a guitar player and uh, I wasn't that good of one, but, you know, I played the piano like I played the guitar. Don't get me wrong, but um, it was like, yeah, I don't play the piano. So fast forward, 20 years later, I'm in Latvia, and uh, I set up an electric piano outside of my apartment, and, um, and there was a, um, uh, what do you call it, 
Yeah, the, you know, the apartments in, in Eastern Europe at the time, at the fall of the Russian Empire, they were all like in this little square. Most apartments are made that way. And there's a park in the middle. And uh, and so I plugged in my this electric piano. It wasn't mine. But I plugged it in and I started playing worship songs, had my eyes closed. It was just for me. Um, and I had the speakers going. And next thing I know, I opened my eyes and there are over a hundred children sitting in front of me. Every window around me, which is including a, a, at least a hundred people, are uh, are at the balconies of their apartments listening to the worship. And I don't necessarily know if they understood English. All they heard was worship, songs. And so they were they were partaking of that. And that was a fulfillment of that prophecy. So I, I believe that what happened was she spoke uh, something into existence. Remember, God said, God said, God said. A prophet, a, a prophetic person will speak life and into the destiny or into the future of someone. They'll also foretell, they'll uh, foretell rather, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're creating uh, uh, an atmosphere. They're creating something and uh, for that person to walk into. And they're, they're bringing out uh, what that person was destined for, and they're speaking it out. Um, that's the prophetic word. And so um, uh, I, I don't want to get into it that much. That's a teaching for another time. But just uh, suffice it to say that, um, you know, his word brings life. And that's why we need to understand his word. I love how he says it here. He says, just say the word and my servant will be healed. Uh, go with me to John 6 very quickly. If you're there. He says, uh, verse 66, as a result of this, many of, this, of his disciples withdrew for they were not walking with him anymore. And, uh, and Jesus said to the 12, do you want not, uh, uh, you do not want to go away also, do you? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. We're not going to go anywhere. We're here. You have the words of eternal life. His word is so important. And that's why you have to. Now, there's two kinds. There's two kinds of words. There's the logos word, the written word. But there's also the rhema word, the word that comes to life. And I'll explain it this way, that that rhema word is a word, like if you're reading the Bible and a verse jumps out of the page at you, um, that's a rhema word from God. And then so you just take that and you go, wow, that was just awesome, you know, kinds of things. Um, you know, and then so they're up on the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember this uh, after all of this. And um, uh, in chapter 17 of Matthew, it's in the other gospel, but in Matthew, he says six days after later. Okay. So he, he foretells his death. He's talking to his disciples about, um, uh, about the cost and it's going to cost you everything. Living for Jesus will cost you everything. Um, but six days later, chapter 17, uh, Jesus took them, uh, took with him, Peter, James, or Jacob, and John, his brother, and led them on a high mountain by themselves. So understand this. Jesus once in a while spoke to large crowds. All right. Every, um, he spent a lot of time with 12 disciples. All right. He was discipling his 12 apostles. But he had three that were really, really close to him. And, uh, and can I say that there was one especially that was super close. And... Um, and then so he says here in verse 2 of chapter 17 that he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his garments became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to him, appeared to them, talking with him. All right. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles, one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah. Now, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and just say that Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets, the Old Testament, okay? Uh, Moses was also a poet. 
Uh, Elijah was a man of vision and he was a prophet. And then while he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus. Okay. Don't allow uh, you to get caught up in peripheral stuff. I mean, we, we have a lot of books and, and a lot of these books are really, really good. I mean, I have a number of books here that have really transformed my life. One of them is called the Holy Spirit by Haley Braun, um, experiencing the, uh, experiencing, um, uh, Jesus, uh, by Madame Guyon. Uh, I have this book called the real faith by Charles Price. Um, and, and so I have books, Questions for Jesus by Tony Solfus. All of these books are good and they are important. But God says, this is my beloved son, hear him. And all of these books that I mentioned, uh, Experiencing the Depths of Jesus Christ, um, The Real Faith, uh, the Holy Spirit, they all point to Jesus. And they all point to the presence of God. So when God says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, listen to him. What God is saying is those guys are important, but listen to my son. Praise God. Anyway. All right. So there you have it. Uh, I'm going to stop there today um, because uh, it's just important uh, that we do stop at some point. And, um, and I want to just tell you that that get into God's word. If you read four chapters a day, every day, you'll be done uh, by October 31st-ish around there. And um, and God will be able to speak to you and he'll be able to and just get into it. And, uh, and can I say, don't just read the Bible to read it. Read the Bible to, to encounter the Lord. That's important. All right. He sent out his word and he healed them. Only speak the word and my servant will be healed. Where can we go? For you have the words of eternal life. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I guess we'll talk to you next time.